then I was posting links on my Facebook page to bird song and things like that. So I will just be clattering around behind you for about two minutes and then we'll get started. Right, large glass of water, yes, pen. Wait, wait, what? That's not what you need to, is that what you need to bring? Oh yeah, no, did I say pen? Yeah, it's like we're bringing a tablespoon. Doesn't matter, you can bring a pen or a tablespoon. And I also need this. There we go. And I need uh, loads and loads of oil. I need two bowls. sad that this is the last time I'm doing this lesson so it's the last time I have to wash up loads and loads of oil that's been poured into a bowl for reasons. Okay, right, I'm ready. Take this down. Right, I'm going to go and blow my nose and then we'll get started. Flipping you around. Hello, Science Alliance. Hello. It is Waves. Lesson five. So we've got one more lesson on Waves next week. And then I'm taking a week off for half term. And then we're going to start our new topic, which I think is going to be marine biology. Uh, but next week, and this counts if you're watching this on Catch Up, you can watch my IGCSE physics lesson, because that is also on waves and it's on lenses. So if you like, you kind of get two waves lessons next week. OK, we're learning about refraction. What is refraction? Well, immediately we should do an activity, which is just get a glass of water and <clears throat> a pen or a tablespoon, something long, and put it in the side of the glass and behold what incredible dark magic is this look what happens <laughs> i mean i know we've all got spoons and pens and glasses of water in our houses but it's pretty weird right it's amazing when you think about it um the spoon has just been chopped in half spoon is whole spoon is chopped in half and if you move the spoon or the pen or whatever you're using across from one side of the glass to the other can you see that okay you should see that it lines up in the middle, becomes like a regular spoon again, and then it gets chopped in half the other way on the other side. Chopped in half, lines up, chopped in half again. Apparently some people after the other lesson on Facebook were really enjoying chopping their fingers in half. It's not, it's not working as well. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, all right. Fun times. So, what is happening? Well, is that gross to drink it now? Oh, what is happening? is that light travels at different speeds depending on what medium it is traveling to. Medium's posh science word for like stuff. So light travels as fast as it can possibly travel in a vacuum when there's hardly any particles, like in space. Um, it travels really quickly through air. It doesn't travel as quickly through water and through diamond travels really quite slowly. Um, and that causes light to bend, which creates that cool effect. To explain more, I'm going to use this toy digger 
this piece of turf that we've ha been having a philosophical debate about this over on Facebook. Is it stealing if it was a free sample, but you knew you weren't actually going to buy the thing? Anyway, I'm going to use this turf and I'm going to use a road. So pretend this digger travels very easily along the road, but it's harder for the digger to travel on the turf. The turf is going to slow the digger down, all right? And uh, let's see what happens and then I'll explain why I'm pushing a digger along the piece of turf. So. Here we go, the turf is at an angle to the road. Digger, just driving along, enjoying being a <gasps> The bottom wheel hits the turf. What will happen next? So the top wheel is still on the road. Top wheel's still moving quite fast, yeah, because it's on the road. Bottom wheel has hit the turf. It's gonna slow down. What happens if one wheel slows down and the other wheel keeps turning at the same speed? We get this turning effect, yeah? Are you okay with that? It's basically pivoting on the wheel that slowed down and ends up going at an angle, okay? And if it was the other way around, we would see the same thing happening. If it was traveling from the turf and its top wheel hit the road, that wheel would start to turn more quickly than this wheel and you would get a turning effect that way, all right? Um, here's my little, that's just my face. Here's a diagram of kind of what's happening for light. So this circle is supposed to be the glass. Inside the glass obviously we've got water here's the spoon let's just put a big line across the spoon saying that that's a light wave a uh, wave of light the light travels towards the edge of the glass and when it hits the glass look what's happening right so the glass is curved so the left hand side of the light ray now if you like is in the air so it's traveling faster but the the, yeah, the left-hand side is in the air, so it's travelling faster, and the right-hand side is still in the glass, so it's moving more slowly. So the light does well, kind of bend like that. But if you came last week and you learned about reflection, your brain knows that light travels in straight lines. So it sees a light ray coming towards you, carrying information or tablespoon or whatever, and it thinks, OK, there must be a tablespoon at the end of that ray of light. So just like last week with the reflection lesson, your brain kind of makes up a ray of light and and makes up an image of the spoon where it thinks the spoon is. Like this, see? So that's the real spoon. That's the real ray of light, the solid line bending. But your brain thinks, oh, okay, right, that's a straight line. So the, the image of the spoon must be, must be there and makes up an image of the spoon. Um, so that's why the bit of spoon or whatever it is that you've stuck in some water, the bit that's in the air is in the right place because it's quite easy for light to just travel through the air and through that little bit of glass to your eye. Um, but the bottom of the spoon is like an illusion. That's just where light is bending and your brain's putting the image of the spoon into kind of the wrong place. Okay then, when you move the spoon or the pen into the center of the glass, it all lines up again. Why is that? Why is that? Why does the spoon seem to be chopped in half when it's at one side? or the other side. It's so good, isn't it? But in the middle, it's it's lined up again. Why? 10 seconds. It's because when light hits the... Uh, the when light comes out into the air dead on, the light slows down at the same time, right? So it, it doesn't bend. It's the equivalent of a digger heading down a road and hitting turf dead on, okay? It would definitely slow down, like light does slow down when it hits glass or water, but it's not going to bend because both wheels are slowing down at the same speed, yeah? Right, so I've got some questions for you to get you just thinking about which way light bends, okay? So here's an example. Um, I'd like you to tell me with these different objects I'm going to show you which way they are going to turn when they turn. So here's your example. You've got a weirdly flat-faced fish because I wanted to make it obvious which bit hit the water first. The fish is travelling through the air. It's going to hit the water. So its chin, that I've marked with a star, is going to hit the water first, yeah? So its chin is going to slow down before its head. So it's going to kind of pivot on its chin and end up turning, I'm terrible with left and rights, but turning in the way shown, right? So I'd like you 
to tell me which way these objects are going to turn. We've got weirdly square fish, which is now leaping out of water and into air at an angle. We've got Wormy, Theatre of Science mascot Wormy, roll into the shoe shop, but her head is about to hit some mud, but her tail will not hit the mud. What's going to happen there? We've got a steamroller hitting a triangle of glue. It could happen. Uh, we've got light moving from air to glass at an angle. And I've, I've drawn lines just to kind of help you visualise it. Sorry about the numbers of the questions. I don't know what was happening there. I don't know where question four's gone. You've got light moving from glass to air. So the same as the last question, but opposite and you've got light moving from air to glass but I've only drawn an arrow for you I haven't put you the lines on so I think it's harder and if you've finished all that can you show how light travels through the glass on this last question and out the other side as well How are you getting on? Nearly finished? If you're bored, you can always like and subscribe and go over to my Facebook page where I've put a little post saying, if you're watching live, say hello. Okay, should we go through them? Question number one. Uh, this weirdly square fish, let's pretend that it's just a strip of pink that will help us visualise it. So this pink line hits the air. The left-hand side of the pink line is in the air first. So it's going to speed up and therefore it's going to kind of turn over to the right and go that way. All right. When we're rolling to the shoe shop, uh, her head's going to hit the mud first. So that side's going to slow down, but the tail side is going to be still going quickly. So she's going to end up going off to the right. Steamroller hitting a triangle of glue. Well, obviously the side that is in the glue is going to slow down. And so it's going to turn sort of towards the triangle of glue. Light moving from air to glass. So it's the bottom right corner of the light that's going to hit the glass first. And therefore the, it's going to bend the way show. <laughs> light moving from glass to air. This one super confused me. Sometimes I've just got to hold up like a pen or a bit of Lego and think about it. So the lid of the pen is hitting the air first, but light travels faster through air. So the lid of the pen side is actually going to be the one that's speeding up. So it's going to turn um, towards the right like that. Light moving from air to glass, but it's only an arrow. Ugh, again, in an exam, I've been getting my pen out just to double check. Right, light moves from air to glass, so it's the lid side again that's hitting the glass first. So that's going to go more slowly. So the bottom of the pen is going to be the one that's turning. All right. Oops, sorry. That was... Oh, I've done that thing where... Oh, no. <laughs> I just... It's going to it's gonna turn that way, okay? Downwards. Don't make me go through all that PowerPoint again. Let's get to the next set of questions. Here we go. So this is a reminder of what we did last week. If you were here, if you weren't here, then this is what we did last week. A person is looking at a duck in a mirror and light travels from the duck, bounces off the mirror and into the person's eye. And that's how the person sees the duck. So I told you there's such a thing as the incident ray, the reflected ray, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. And I said, can you work out which one's which? And you probably said that the reflected ray is the one bouncing off the mirror and you were correct. So the other ray is the incident ray, the ray that's shining onto the thing. And then we drawn this normal here, this dotted line uh, that helps us see where the angle of incidence was. And then the angle between the normal and the reflected ray is the angle of reflection. All right, that's your recap on last week. So now 
we don't have a reflected rate because we're talking about refraction, but we've still got an incident rate, a refracted rate, an angle of incidence and an angle of refraction. Uh, can you can you sort of, maybe you could even do a very fast sketch of this diagram if you like doing that kind of thing, or you could just picture in your head, which one of these is the incident ray, the refracted ray, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction? If you haven't got a clue, don't worry, I'm going to tell you in like 12 seconds. And if you're finding this too easy, what happens when the ray comes out of the glass, please? If you're a fast worker, you could sketch this and sketch a normal and tell me what happens when that light comes out of the glass. I'm going to have to blow my nose again. You've got the time to take me to blow my nose. How have you gone? So the incident ray is just the ray that's shining onto the thing, just like it was last week, which means that the refracted ray is the one that is being refracted. Yeah, it's the one that is being bent. And the angle of incidence, you know, you've got to be careful here, right? It's the, again, it's the angle between the incident ray and the normal. So that's the angle of incidence. And the refracted uh, angle, the angle of refraction is again between the normal and the refracted ray. There we go. Phew. So let's carry that ray of light on. And again, have a think about it. So you've got right light coming along like this, modeling it with my pen. It's the, well, it's the pen lid that's gonna come out of the glass first, right? So that's now in air, so it's gonna speed up. So the ray is gonna turn that way. If you've sketched a normal, well done. If you've done a really good diagram, you might have noticed that two of those angles are the same. Okay, bowl trick. Ah, oh, I love this one. So I said to bring a bowl, and a coin and a large glass of water. I've been making a terrible mess trying to pour water from a glass into a bowl all week, so I managed using a jug. Apologies uh, if you want to put, quickly put it in a jug or stand over a sink, you can. What you've got to do is you put the coin into the bowl on the flat bit, just to, so it's not going to move anywhere when you pour water in, and you have to angle it so that the coin is just out of sight, only just and then you pour water in and see what happens. If you're not doing it, you can watch me doing it now, look. So, excuse the Lego story time. We're doing Lego story time show about the Dawn Chorus this week. I will be on YouTube with it live at two if you fancy joining me. Put the, I don't put it on the slopey bit, that's what I did last week, and obviously as soon as the water goes in, it moves. So put the coin on the flat bit, move back so it's just out of sight, but only just. Okay, I'm going to try and keep the camera really still and pour the water in. I promise you that the coin is not moving at all and I'm not moving the camera. Look at that. Oh, it's just full of magic, this lesson, isn't it? Wow. The coin has come into view. Look at that. Fully in view now. What is with that? What is happening there? Um, I'm going to be quite mean, actually. I want you to try and tell me what's happening there i want you this is so mean it's so hard like i can't do it sketch a diagram to explain how the bowl trick works so i've said if i was in the room with you right now what i would be really happy to see you doing is like drawing lots of pictures of eyes and bowls and rays of light and then crossing them out and then starting again and crossing them out and starting again i will flash you the answer because this is super hard um, I just end up staring at my whiteboard for ages and do loads of crossing out. I'll flash you the answer. You ready? Three, two, one. Uh. There you go. Have a go. I will try and do it on the board. I mean, this is like the, what, the 12th time or something in a fortnight that I've tried to do this. So I really should be able to do it by now. And it still takes me ages. Think about which one's the real coin, which one's the image of the coin, where the light is going. Uh. Uh. Oh, straight away got it wrong.
if you can't do it at all, don't worry about it. Honestly, it just it would be brilliant if you just have a go. And then when I show you the answer, you'll have a better idea. You'll remember it more. Come on again. This is not about getting it right, this activity. It's about practicing failing. Okay, I've done it. I'll show you mine. Hey, I'm getting quite good at this, you know. <laughs> so the, the first time I did this lesson last week, I think it was for IGCSE, I was totally fine. And then the second time I did it, I just couldn't do it. At this point in the lesson, I was just like, can't do it. <laughs> Let's look at the picture that I found on the internet. But now I've tried 12 times. I have got it now, I'll show you, look. Um, so here's the real coin, which is hiding sort of closer to the edge of the bowl. So light travels from the coin, and as we've seen, okay, getting my trusty pen out, a ray of light traveling from the coin, the lid of the pen, or that side of the ray of light, would hit the air first, so it would speed up, so it is going to bend into the person's eye. So the solid lines are correct and the solid coin is the actual coin but your brain sees light traveling at it from that direction and your brain is totally awesome and it's like oh okay that's a straight line carrying information about a coin so i guess the coin must be there and imagines this ray of light and this imaginary image of a coin here it's good eh right I want to tell you very quickly about something called refractive index, basically just because I want to do another super cool activity. <laughs> uh, that's me, sorry. There you go. Right, here's the diagram that I found on the internet, just in case I couldn't do it. Uh, that's, so S is the I, R is the real coin, L is the fake coin, okay? And P is the point where it's the boundary, isn't it, between the water and the air. So that's where the light is bending. Okay, how much a material changes the speed of light is called its refractive index. So the refractive index um, is n, it's what we call n. So as I've said, light travels very quickly through a vacuum where there's no particles, it travels pretty quickly through air, it travels less quickly through uh, water. So they've all those substances have got different what we call refractive index because they slow light down by different amounts. Here is an equation just in case you're interested. So n is the refractive index, how much the thing speed slows the light down. And the equation is that it's the speed of light in a vacuum, so the fastest that light could possibly be, divided by the speed of light through the material. So if the, if the light travels really slowly through a material, if this bottom number is really small, then this number, the refractive index, would be really big, okay? Right, I've got an activity for you now. Um, According to the Institute of Physics, the refractive index of Pyrex glass and the refractive index of vegetable oil are almost exactly the same. So at the moment, I've got a small Pyrex bowl inside a large Pyrex bowl. And you can tell, right? You can, you can see that because light is traveling through the first Pyrex bowl and then it's hitting this boundary of air and it's slightly bending and then it's hitting the next layer of glass and it's slightly bending again so that's allowing us to see both bowls but if i pour vegetable oil says the institute of physics into this bowl then the middle bowl is going to disappear i know so obviously had to try this so i'm going to set you up uh, on this side of it so that you've got the best view um here we go there you go so you can clearly see there are two bowls, two bowls there. Now we pour on the, the vegetable oil. Oh, so oily. Kind of beautiful though, actually, even if you don't think that this works, it's still just a nice visual, isn't it? Oil being poured into a bowl. Okay, I'm gonna get behind the camera so that I can pour oil and watch the screen at the same time. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, 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 sloppy oil, no. 
no, no, oh no, no, there's no time for that in my day. Ugh. Okay, so you can see, right, the first bowl is full of oil. I'm just going to carry on boring so that it slops over into the second bowl. I really need to buy some kind of small Pyrex item. Oh, look at that. How good is that? So that's quite interesting, isn't it? Can you see? I think this, I'll top it up to the top. Do you reckon the second little bowl inside has disappeared? Shaky, shaky. I think that's pretty good, you know. I think the Institute of Physics are really onto something there. That's amazing, isn't it? Like I say, I think I think it would work better if I had a kind of small. Yeah. So look, that's the that's where the oil hasn't quite covered the rim of the bowl, and that's where it has. It's you, it's you definitely see what they're getting at, right? Is it worth all the cleaning up? I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. And adults, you're welcome. I have tried it at home so that you don't have to. Okay, I thought we would end with a quiz. Um, I am going to, all right, full disclosure, fine. I'm gonna run up to my printer because I left the quiz on my printer. I'm gonna ask you five questions to see how well you have understood uh, this lesson. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. I'm really sorry. You can you could like this, you know, like you could like you could like and subscribe. I don't know. Sorry, sorry. Count how long I'm gonna be. I reckon 20 seconds. I'm back. Right. Question number one. Seamless. Absolutely seamless. <sighs> Question number one. How are there more people watching now than there were when I left? Was that better telly, was it? Hey, everyone, guess what? <clears throat> Question one. A laser is sun at the surface of a swimming pool. Which diagram shows what would happen? So the A, you have a laser being shone at the swimming pool and the laser going straight into the water. B, you've got a laser beam shone at a swimming pool and the beam reflecting off the water. And C, you've got a laser. I shouldn't be so out of breath, should I have to those stairs? A laser hitting the surface of the water and then the light is bending and going into the water at a different angle. <laughs> Which of those is the true scenario? A, B or C? The answer is... Drum roll. Yeah, it's C, isn't it? It is C. That was a GCSE question. And the second question was, what is the name of that? What's the name of that? And the answer was refraction. Yeah, there you go. You just got, just got a couple of marks at GCSE. Question two. A ray of light passing into a glass block. Oh man, I can't believe I still haven't fixed this sentence. I've been showing this incorrect sentence all four no, sorry. A ray of light passes into a glass block as shown. Describe what happens to the direction the light is traveling in. So a ray of light travels through air, hits a glass block dead on. Describe what happens to the direction of that ray of light, please. Five, four, three, two. The answer is... Nothing! It's kind of a trick question. Yeah, it's the same as that digger going from the road to the turf, but both wheels hitting the turf at the same time. So if the question was what happens to the speed of the light, the light would definitely slow down traveling through glass, but it's, it's not gonna bend either way. Question three. Getting a little bit more challenging. A ray of light leaves a piece of glass. What letter shows the angle of refraction? Which of those letters shows the angle of reflection? So you've got a ray of light traveling through a block of glass and then coming out into air. You've got a normal. Is the angle of refraction, the angle between the ray of light in the glass and the normal, the ray of light and the edge of the glass, the ray of light coming into the air and the normal, or the ray of light coming into the air and the edge of the glass? This was the one that was getting quite a few mixed answers on Facebook. The answer is, it is B. We went through that quite quickly, didn't we? Yeah, because 
Um, this is the incident ray, the one travelling through the glass. Uh, the one travelling through the air is the refracted ray, it's the one that's been refracted, so the angle between the normal and the ray, the refracted ray is the angle of refraction. Well done! Question four. Only two more to go. Uh, so only, only two, two, two more to go. Here we go. Good job this isn't the YouTube one, is it, where the lesson's being saved forever and ever. <clears throat> different materials slow light down by different amounts. How much a material slows light down is called its A. Reflective subtext B. Refractive indices C. Refractive ibex or D. Refractive index Which one of those is the correct term for how much a material slows light down? Reflective subtext, refractive indices, refractive ibex or refractive index? The answer is... D, the refractive index. Well done, if you got that right. Had a lot of fun with that question. And finally, question five. Light travels fastest through A, a vacuum where there are no particles, B, air, C, glass, or D, diamond. Which one of those materials does light travel fastest through? A vacuum, air, glass, or diamond? The answer is... It's a vacuum. Well done if you got that. Yes, when we talk about the speed of light, we are, of course, talking about how fast light travels through the vacuum of space. OK, look, <sighs> that's the end of the lesson. So um, I'm going over to my Facebook page just to see if anyone has uh, said hello. Oh, look, loads of people saying hello. That's good. Hey, Noor's here. Brilliant. Hello, Noor. Um, oh, yeah. So if you want to support me, this is a bit where I tell people how uh, you can support me if you want to support me. This is my job. <laughs> such a good job but it's only my job because enough people are paying me if not enough people were paying me for this job I would not be able to do this job but I just make it optional and it works because people are choosing to support because they're totally lovely so oh hello Lucy printed out the IGCSE <laughs> oh yeah I see um yeah if you want to support me you can go to my about section on YouTube and click the link to this website called coffee and people sign up with like five or six quid a month you can pay me more if you like but five or six pounds a month is enough for me to carry on doing this job and you know it's, it's quite good value for you if you're using the lessons and I'll even send you things I'll post you Theatre of Science magazine, which uh, is just a great magazine. I'm really proud of it. It's a science magazine that I would want to read. I am working very hard on the next issue, which is on weeds, but this one's on mould. They're not always on, like, really gross, sort of traditionally boring things. But yeah, if you sign up now, I'll send you this comic that is about how penicillin was discovered, and it's got Choose Your Own Adventure, and it's got a, a free biodegradable plastic bag with it so that you can grow your own moulds and then identify it using the mould spotting guide. Very proud of the Science magazine. And I'll send you some rainbow glasses just because, you know, like fun. And they don't weigh very much. And I'll send you a description of how they work, which if you're learning about waves, should be of interest to you. Oh, hello, Mary. And Jack is here too, although he's beginning to know more than me. Ugh. Ugh, oh, what a terrible phase. Ah, oh, Jack, sort yourself out. <laughs> Why didn't you just pour the oil into the outer bowl? Why didn't I just pour the oil into the outer bowl? Yeah, I don't know. Bella's slippers are watching. Oh no, Bella and slippers. I was going to say that's a massive slipper. You drunk spoon on finger water. <laughs> I know, was that really gross? I did think about that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And Lucy's been giving me loads of actual answers. Fantastic, thank you, Lucy. Well done for saying nothing. All right, uh, Nor, thank you for your excellent question. I don't know, I don't know, Nor. Don't make me take the oil out of the bowl, Nor, and then put it back in. I can't, we'll just have to wait until we do refraction again in three years time, and then I will remember that feedback. Thank you. All right, Mary, thank you for coming. Jack, whatever, man. <laughs> uh, I'll see you all very soon. I'll see you at two o'clock if you want to come to the Lego Storytime show about the Dawn Chorus and why birds sing so much so early in the morning. Uh, or I'll, yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye!